Hi, my name is Bree and I'm a para endurance rider here in the UK. This here, this is Lock and Lad, otherwise known as Loki. He's my main ride for endurance. <laughs> He's rather cheeky. One thing he also has is quite a strict diet. And I've had a few people ask me recently why I feed oil in his food and also what sort of oil I use. So I thought I'd do a short video on the different types of oil, why I would use them, why other people might use them and what oils to avoid. Yes, hello, I'll do your feed in a minute. Mwah. As you can see, he is absolutely adorable. He's also in really good condition and ready for the endurance season in 2021. And one of those reasons is the fact he has oil in his feed. Now, Loki here is quite difficult in terms of management. So I have to be incredibly strict and incredibly careful with what I feed him. <laughs> with endurance, we are doing long distance riding. So I need slow release energies. Now oil is fantastic for a slow release energy. When you've got sugars, that's a quick release energy and they are great if you've got things like racehorses that are doing a sprint. But when you're riding for several hours over a long distance, you need it to be slow. A bit like having your porridge in the morning as opposed to your chocolate che Cheerios. <laughs> Another reason for using oil is it's absolutely fantastic for the horse's skin and coat. Now it's a bit more difficult to see with him because he's grey, but I've also got a dark bay and she is super shiny because she has oil in her feed. She also gets a little bit itchy in the springtime and it can help with things like sweet itch. <laughs> Another problem that Loki here has is that he's suffered from behind gut ulcers in the past. He's also colicked on me. And oil again is fantastic for helping towards those things. Now oil in itself doesn't help with ulcers, but what it do is it can replace starch in a diet. Now starch aggravates ulcers. <laughs> it's also really good for things like respiratory problems. If your horse has got COPD, then oil can help reduce dust in the feed. If you nibble my ear, there's trouble. <laughs> so, as I've already said, oil is a concentrated energy. It relies on fats. <laughs> yes, there are treats in there. These are the good fats to release the energy slowly. Right, there's your last treat, off you go. <laughs> now, pure oil, as opposed to oil added to feed, is actually 60 to 90% digestible for a horse. When it's in an added feed, like alfalfa with added oil, it's actually less digestible. So it's really good to add oil to your feed separately. You can add up to 500 milliliters a day, but this comes with a warning. You must build it up slowly. Personally, I start with no more than 50 mils a day. Some people will go in straight at 100. Depends how cautious you want to be and how sensitive your horse's tummy is as well. Now the thing to look for in oils is the omegas. So you get omega-3 and you get omega-6 and they're the two main ones that you get in oil. What you want from your oil is you want a high level of omega-3s and you don't really want much of the omega-6. Yes. Now the best oil I find for this is linseed. Now linseed or flaxseed oil, it's actually got a ratio of four to one. It is the highest omega-3 of all the oils and it's got the lowest omega-6. It's also got small amounts of vitamin E in it. Now this is something else, if you're feeding oil, you also need to make sure that your horse has got enough vitamin E in their diet so they can actually use it. And if you stand on me, there really will be trouble. <laughs> You also have to consider oxidation with oil. With more oxidation, it's not gonna be as useful. And that happens when you get exposed to the sun, but it also gets exposed in the processing process. So you're looking for cold pressed oil, and that is gonna have the lowest levels of oxidation in it. There's lots and lots of different oils on the market for your horses. Things like wheat, oat, corn, rice, and soya oil. Sunflower oil and olive oil you're also probably very familiar with. Now these are all great and they are all cheap, but 
they come with a warning because they are all either low or in some cases have no omega-3 and let's remember that's the one that we want for our horses and they're also high in omega-6 so they may be cheap but they're not going to do the job that you want them to do while we're on it this looks like Buck's coming to see us he's my youngster he's just about to turn two and he can demonstrate the fact that me <laughs> oils are actually also really, really good for a horse's condition. So if you have a growing youngster like mine, who's actually a Czech warm blood, they might struggle to put condition on during the winter. So adding oil to their feed is a much better way of helping with that than adding things like sugars and starches. Now, I also use coconut oil because that comes as part of one of my feeds that I use. Now coconut oils is fantastic because it is low in omega-6. It's quite high in saturated fats, but it's got no omega-3. So although it's gonna help you with things like the coat condition and the condition of the horse as well, in, in Buckley's case here, as he walks past, you'll see that he's growing and he doesn't look his best right now. So he does need the condition from oil. But I wouldn't feed coconut oil on its own because it just doesn't help with the slow release energies and those omega 3s that we really, really want in our oil. So, just as a quick recap wheat oil, oil, oat oil, corn, rice, soya, sunflower oil, olive oil, they all might be cheap, but they're not going to do the job we want from them. So, they're actually quite pointless, in my opinion, to bother feeding. If you're going to feed oil, you need to go for the ones that are higher in omega 3 and low in omega 6. So things like linseed oil is the best of the bunch. Rapeseed oil, it's low in omega-3 and moderate in omega-6. Some people feed rapeseed, but to be honest, you're much better off with the linseed. Hello, Loki. Mwah. Again, he wants his tea, so I'm gonna wrap it up now. Two really important things. You must make sure your horse has got a vitamin E in their diet to help utilize the oil. But most of all, whether your horse has got a as a nip whether your horse has got a sensitive tummy or not you must build up the use of oil slowly start with 50 or no more than 100 milliliters a day and then gradually work your way up to about 500 at the most if you need to go that far but check your horse see how they're doing and adjust their feed accordingly